Morning Baycroft. It's Wednesday today, so our third sporting event. Thank you to Miss Ryan yesterday for being amazing at showing us the sock throw. Today, no, there's no bears involved, unfortunately. But we do have a member of Green Team. Now, who could it be? Mrs. Povey, yes. over to you. Good morning, Baycroft, and welcome to the Virtual Sports Day Challenge. I'm here today to introduce you to the standing long jump. So, to start with, the equipment that you need for this is one tea towel and one hand towel and one bath sheet. All you do is fold them in half and place them next to each other. Then, you need to stand on the line and bend your knees and jump. If you clear the tea towel, you get yourself one point. So I managed to do that, so I'm going to give the hand towel a go. Again, bend your knees and jump. If you manage to clear that, then you get yourself two points. So I'm now going to move on to the bath sheet. I think this is going to be a bit of a challenge for me. Okay, bend your knees and jump. Okay, I'm sure you can do better than what I did on that one. If you clear that, you get yourself three points. If you're feeling that you want to challenge yourself even further, then you need to grab the tea towel and place it on the end of the bath sheet and go back to the beginning and bend your knees and I'm gonna leave that one to you because I've probably got no chance of clearing that. If you do clear that one, you get yourself four house points for your team. So that's one extra bonus point. That's it for me. That's the challenge completed. Come on, Greenhouse. Let's do the best you can. Good luck. Enjoy the rest of the day. Bye. Good morning Baycroft, so this week we are looking at enthusiasm and people can be enthusiastic about absolutely anything. You have people that are enthusiastic about trains, people that are enthusiastic about birds, even people that are enthusiastic about potatoes. So I've got a clip for you to watch, it's a short video about a man who is very enthusiastic about a different food item. Then there's a few questions for you to answer afterwards. Enjoy! From day dot, young Jeff had a curious and unshakable love for beans. Thank you. 
so, in a curious twist, by inventing something for everyone, Jeff found he had it all. Hello Baycroft and welcome to an episode about being a wildlife TV presenter. But first I'd share with you my dream job, driving a tractor, pulling a train load of rescue dogs. Now what's there not to love about that? Maybe something to plan for for my retirement. So I was thinking about what jobs did I want to do when I was younger? So I made a list. I wanted to be a paleontologist and find dinosaur bones. I also wanted to drive the diesel shunter engine down at Italy Station. I really, really wanted to appear in a Star Wars movie. And I always fancied having a go at being a wildlife TV cameraman or presenter. As it is, I did once find a fossil mammoth tooth on Norfolk Beach. I have worked on trains for British Railways. And I'm very happy that I get to teach photography to you guys now. So I've sort of done the jobs I've wanted to. Still waiting to be in Star Wars though. So come on Disney, come on JJ Abrahams, I'm here. Any role, I'm not fussy. Anyway, moving on. So I wonder what my career as a wildlife cameraman or presenter might have looked like. And to be honest, probably not that brilliant because I don't really like talking to the camera. So you'll notice today, there's lots of little avatar versions of me on this presentation. Hello Baycroft and welcome to today's lesson, which is all to do with wildlife photography and being a wildlife presenter. So at the moment, I'm here down at Warsaw Beach, trying to film some of the local wildlife, but you're probably aware it's really, really windy. My hat has long since blown away, and uh, I'm struggling to keep the camera still. So tip number one is to choose a nice day to go and do your wildlife photography if you don't want your picture bouncing around all over the place. So that was a bit of a disaster really, wasn't it? So I thought it was time to leave Wars Ash and hopefully get some help. So I thought maybe it's probably better to look at some of those successful wildlife presenters and see if I can get some helpful hints and tips from them. So these two presenters have really been influential in my passion for nature. They're Chris Packham and Sir David Attenborough. And here's a fact, Chris Packham used to live just around the corner from me and even went to the same school as me, but he's a few years older. So I'm going to start off with Sir David Attenborough and some of the best bit of wildlife presenting I know. And this is the scene where he's teaching us all about the amazing lyrebird. Everything Sir David does is just magic. But Chris Packham's an amazing presenter and he's very proud to be autistic. Listen to this. Hello, I've got some very exciting news about a charity that's close to my heart. Take a look at this. Yes, the National Autistic Society has a new logo and it's pretty smart. You see what they've done here? There's a spectrum in there and the letter A. I like it very much. The National Autistic Society is intent on helping the 700,000 autistic adults and children in the UK. Founded in 1962, it has 22,000 members and I'm one of them. So why not join me and help to make the future a brighter place? for all of the people on this beautiful spectrum. And I thought it'd be a really good idea to get back and to give us some wild loads of tips. Nothing like handing over to another former Bit and Park student to do my work for me. I'm Chris Packham, 
So I'd like to encourage you to try your hand at wildlife television presenting. In this film, we're going to concentrate on proper research, camera angles, getting some help, and then writing and performing a script. Now, I spend a significant part of my time working as a television presenter, which says to me that if I can do it, then virtually everyone can do it. So what are the necessary skills? What are the key ingredients you might want to think about if you want to give it a go? Well, I think that the most critical of all is enthusiasm, is passion, and an ability to communicate that passion. But you've also got to be prepared. You've got to know your subject. And today we're going to be talking about wild turkeys. So research is always a very important part of the job. I've got a couple of books here, might even go onto the internet, to gen up on some proper turkey facts. You always want something that's going to surprise your audience, something which is going to make them go down the pub and say to their friends, wow, I didn't know that, I'd never have thought that. Here, is the star of our show today. And what a magnificent animal this is. Just look at the head. Okay, so we've got a great animal. How are we gonna work with it? Well, I've got this little camera here, which means I could, in theory, film myself. To do that, I can talk to the camera like this so you get a shot of me, but that doesn't really involve the turkey, so you'd have to get a separate shot like this. Not so good when you're trying to present. Then I could hold it right out here, so I've got a shot of the turkey over my shoulder, but then I'd have to concentrate on thinking about where the turkey is. I mean, at the moment, you can't see that turkey because it's hidden behind me. It's not easy, is it? Ideally, what you want is someone to help you so that you've got a separate camera that can concentrate on getting the pictures of the bird in the right place. And at the moment, it's behind me. Let's get rid of that single camera and just concentrate on this one here. Ideally, you either need that turkey over my shoulder, like this, so you can see it clearly, or perhaps even better, you want me behind the turkey here, like this, so that the animal's at the forefront, capturing everyone's interest. But of course the animal's mobile, so I've got to be mobile too. I've got to be moving with the animal whilst I'm still talking to you, making sure that I'm not obscured by it. Let's see if we can get him to stop in one place. I happen to know that this turkey quite likes my shoes. Okay, so you've seen me with the turkey, but take a look at this. These are young turkeys. We've got some natural history footage which has been shot in advance. So this is a great opportunity to learn a bit more about the species and to explain other aspects of its lifestyle. Look here, this is fun. They're having some dust bathing antics. I wonder why they're dust bathing, how long they spend doing it. Well, these are all the sorts of things that you could put into your voiceover, your narration that you put on top of these pictures. Now, the first thing to say is you've got to get your facts straight. Don't make a mistake. There will be a pedant out there, it might be me, and they will write in and spoil your morning. So do check you've got everything right. Then you need a narrative. You've got to have a story, not just a collection of facts strung together. So think about constructing that through your piece. And then, of course, you've got to actually deliver it. And given that you've got a story, you want to do that in a storytelling fashion. You want some excitement. You also might want some authority, particularly if you're talking about something serious, conservation, something of that ilk. Let's see how it goes. They've been doing this since they've been a week or so old. Rolling on their backs and dust bathing. You see, it helps keep their feathers in trim and to get rid of parasites. So there you go, those are my top tips on how to be a television presenter. I'm not the greatest expert in the world. I think that if I can do it, then there's a very good chance that you can do it too. Good luck. So wow, there's a lot of useful information there. So just to recap on the main points, research your subject, use the best camera angle, Get help with your filming, write an informative script, and narrate using expression. 
So with those hints and tips, it should be a bit easier to write and narrate the script. But I'd give it a go with uh, a video of some fish that I filmed while snorkeling. Here we go. Here, the Atlantic Ocean crashes headlong into the volcanic island of Lanzarote. But find a sheltered bay and a careful snorkeler will soon be surrounded by abundant white sea bream and salerma. The white sea bream, or sago, have a distinctive spot on their tail to confuse predators. The salerma choose to seek safety in numbers. So one of the things is to get up nice and close to the nature that you're filming. It's also very helpful to have an assistant helping you with filming. So here I'm just filming something as simple as a common fly. So whilst you're out and about doing your wildlife filming, sometimes it's a really good idea to be absolutely still, to be quite quiet, and just let nature happen around you. Okay, so another thing about going out and doing some wildlife filming is knowing what wildlife there are and particular birds, you often will hear them, but you don't see them. So using a phone app like this one here, you can record bird noise. And then we see what it tells us that we're listening to. So my app is telling me that the birds that we can hear in the bush behind us are goldfinches. I haven't seen a single goldfinch, but I've heard lots of them. Well, I hope you enjoyed our short film. I'm now going to hand over to your learning task. So, learning task one. Tell us what your favourite animal is and why. Maybe draw a picture of it. Learning task two. Tell us what job you'd like to do when you're older. What skills will you need to have? Learning task three. Install a bird identification app such as BirdNet on a phone or tablet. Ask an adult first, then tell us what birds you can detect near you. And then in task four, have a go at making your own nature video and send it in to us. As always, we love seeing your work. 
Thank you. And that's goodbye from me.